we're joined here today with Dallas South Oak Cliff High School and head coach Jason Todd. Coach, um, could you start us off with some open comments on today's game? Yeah, my team, uh, you know, we fought. Uh, came up a little short today, but I'm still proud of those kids, proud of the coaches. You know, we just fell a little short today, but nothing is permanent in life. They did was tougher stuff than this right now. They just don't really realize it. So, you know, it's about getting getting those guys in college, the seniors and uh, the youngsters, you know, preparing to use this motivation to get back in the weight room. Questions? Coach, your team's dominated the second half all playoff long. What kind of made the difference today, did you feel like? Uh, it was short in possessions, uh, you know, because we didn't have a lot of possessions. I, not recovering that outside kick really was one thing that hurt us a lot. Uh, I felt our defense played a uh, pretty dominant game. Uh, some stuff I deal with in other areas, you know, in regards to the game, I, you know, not in this situation, though, in this setting. But, uh, I mean, the kids played, but we, we just fell a little short, you know, and that happens sometimes, you know, put people away. I was talking about Danny Green. I think he was the catalyst the last two playoff runs. Yeah. I think he's a special kid. You know, I saw a tweet about, you know, his recruiting not being where it is. You know, I think that's something that's going to change, I think, for the next few weeks. We'll talk about him and his run these last two weeks. Uh, he, he's had remarkable playoffs. You know, Dan has been a warrior, you know, since since, since, since I've known him. Uh, he, he's a do-it-all kid. You know, he got a chip on his shoulder. Uh, man. You know, I'm mad because the kid is hurting. You know, he's mad because I'm hurting, but I'm mad for him. You know, because, you know, they feel like they let me down, and no, they didn't. I told them as long as they played the game to all, whatever the result was, I can take it. Uh, but I know Danny, uh, <clears throat> he'll be fine. He'll be in college, and I'm, a lot of people been knocking down the door lately. And, uh, you know, he epitomizes the heart of South Oak Cliff. When your defense played the way that it did, got the stops that it did, and a couple calls on that last drive, you know, negated some of that effort. How difficult is that for, for your defense? Uh, th th that was a hard pill to swallow, to be honest. You know, in the PFD, they, they do a great job, you know, to take nothing away from them. But, you know, uh, I really want to watch the film. There's a couple of things I feel kind of questionable, but I'll deal with that at a later date. But at the end of the day, congrats to PNG. You know, they did more, you know, in order to win this game. And, you know, we got to take the hats off. And, now we're in here interviewing first instead of last. So, you know, it's some redemption. You know, we need to come back and be perfect next year. We'll be back. Let's talk about what this three-year run means to your program and to DISD. No, uh, I think it's the greatest story of, of Texas high school sports history. Well, a lot of things that we've done have never been done in the, in the history of Texas. Uh, first of all, we're in a city to one state. Uh, you know, that, that was a big thing. You know, you had Yates to do it, and you know, you had Carter who was later stripped up to do it. And then we also did it again and went back to back at the same school. I, that made, I was the first African American head coach to win a state championship back to back at the same school. Uh, so the kids got that, and then to be on the run for a three peat and get this close, you know, it would be monumental. And, and I think it's, you no, know, with the loss at the end or the victory today, it's still the greatest, greater than any other. Sports story, you come out of Texas, you know, you can go look at the Mojos and all the other things, the Cadiz and the Allen. Nothing is greater than this because this is the first one that comes from a multiple school district dealing with inner city kids where a lot of people said they weren't smart enough, don't have enough discipline, they're not well coached enough. And for us to do what we've done with these kids that everybody else labeled as outcasts is the most remarkable job me, my staff, and administration has done and it needs to be written in a book and it needs to be a movie about these kids and what they overcame and have done. Coach, you mentioned the African American uh, coaches. Your five of the six guys today are yeah. African Americans. What's that mean to you and just the significance of that? Well, it, it means a lot because first of all, it's starting to, you know, now my son can envision one day that he may can be a coach. You know, uh, and, 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 and it doesn't have to be a player. You know, he may play the game, but make his expertise in coaching. And these other kids see, you just don't have to be a player. It's coaches to get paid a lot of money, not only at high school level, but college and professional levels. And so I just want kids to be able to see, you also can be the brains behind the organization, don't always have to be the muscle behind the organization. Um, coach, um, PNG kind of had the ball for about 10 minutes on offense, kind of kept your offense on the field. Did that kind of throw you a little out of rhythm when you did get the ball back late in the fourth quarter? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it kind of it put us in a desperation situation, and we weren't able to get a, uh, some good yards on the first couple of plays, and then we had a couple penalties, and then it kind of went from worse to worse to worse, and then just come down to fourth to 29 desperation play. 
You know, but like I said, you know, hats out to Coach Joseph and those guys, you know, they, we knew coming in that it was going to be a tough game. And, uh, you know, and, and we expected that coming in. And I know those guys have been preparing to get back to this moment too uh, because the roles are switched this year. But all I want to say, you know, I want to commit both programs. I want to make sure everybody knows that we'll be back. South of Cliff is not finished. And like I always say, it's the greatest story ever told in Texas high school history. Good. All right. Thank All you right. very much. Thanks, Coach. All
We're joined here today with Port Neches Groves High School head coach Jeff Joseph. Coach, could you introduce your two student athletes? Yeah, number 28, uh, Reed Richard, quarterback and wide receiver, and number 19, Shea Adams, uh, wide receiver and quarterback. All right, coach, could you start us off with your opening comments on today's victory? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a culmination of a lot of work, and it's been the past 12 months of uh, after last year just getting back to the grind and working. And our guys know, man, we do talk all the time that. It doesn't happen by accident. You get what you work for. And these guys truly have bought into that mentality and uh, put into the work and uh, just really given everything they have inside of their hearts. And that's, that's the reason we're able to win a game like that tonight. Questions? Coach, it's not every day you see a kicker win and an MVP award. Can you talk me through the impact of special teams in this game? Of course. Uh, I'll start, start this way. I wish you didn't have to kick so many field goals. We're down inside the five a couple times and not able to punch the ball in. And, um, you know, we moved the ball in the first half and had chances and ended up with three field goals. But the fact that we were able out there, to go out there and, and snap the ball consistently, kill Cropper and uh, Kate Shakes not her holding and, and Gio able to knock down those field goals, it's, it's huge. It means everything. And even, even the extra points, man, the, the consistency uh, that those guys showed tonight was huge. And Coach Parsons has done a great job with our special teams of uh, making that stuff important. And it paid off at the end of the game today. It's kind of ironic that you know your kicker kicked four field goals, but the biggest kick in the game was that onside kick. Just yeah. describe that onside kick if you can. Yeah, it uh, was a call. We thought we had something going into the game, and we worked on it this week, and uh, we repped it over and over and over and over, uh, just making sure we got it right because we knew we had a chance on that thing. Um, and it, it, in the moment in the game, we, we had talked about it, and we knew um, if we scored there that we were going to use the onside kick. And, uh, we called it and our kids executed it and there's really not a, a ton more you can say about it. It was a, a great momentum swing for us and I think um, that, you know, that, that pushed us forward to scoring that touchdown there at the end of the game. How much did that factor into kicking the field goal down eight at that point? Did you know you were going to onside it no matter no, what? It, our, our thought process then was let's make sure we get points. Uh, and then headed into the kickoff, we would struggled covering kicks in the first half a little bit uh, with some of the sky kicks that we tried to do. So they, they were getting field position anyways, and uh, the risk reward, it, it just weighed itself to where uh, it, we, we had played the short field a lot on defense throughout the night. Uh, so we went, go ahead and uh, play for the win, and let's go attack this thing and try to make a play, and we were able to. Coach, you come from a football family. Can you talk about what it meant to share that moment with your dad on the field after winning a state? Yeah, yeah uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome that, that he's as supportive as he is and he's as happy as anybody that, that uh, we were able to win. And that's, that's really special. But it, it's more about um, these guys right here and getting to share that with them. And after everything we've been through for two years and the, the heart that they've showed and buying into uh, our staff and me and giving me a chance, uh, that, that was the really special part for me. Coach, could you talk about uh, Isaiah Wynn's performance and what he's meant to this team? I know he got really close to that uh, yeah. program rushing record. Yeah, Isaiah's tough as nails. I think after tonight, he probably ran for 2,000 yards on the year. Uh, and, and he's a fighter. He's a battler. And I'm going to be honest, I didn't know what we had in Isaiah last year, uh, early in the year. But the more we gave him the ball, the more we realized that uh, the guy was competitive and he was going to get it done. And he, he plays with a ton of heart like everybody else on our team. Shay, can you take us through that touchdown run and, and the feeling of getting in the end zone there? Yeah, we uh, worked that play a couple weeks ago. And then whenever we caught it, I was supposed to jump up and over the top, but didn't have anybody outside. So it was a <clears throat> unreal feeling getting to walk in the end zone right there. And then, Coach, just being able, you know, three minutes left on the clock, 
how much trust level do you have in your defense that they're, that they're going to close it out there? Oh, they've, they've done an unbelievable job this whole year of making plays when, it, when we have to make plays. They, uh, they have a <coughs> philosophy over there. Coach McDaniel has, has talked to them about constantly for the last two years. And they, they just say, put the ball down. Um, and that's just the mentality of put the ball down and let's get this thing playing and we're going to go play no matter what the situation, no matter what's happened in the past, put the ball down and we're going on to the next play. Um, and, and, you know, you get in those, those moments and they were doing some stuff to create some one-on-ones on the outside and we moved Reed over there to play, play one-on-one with their uh, outside receiver and, and we were able to uh, get some pressure on the quarterback too and that, that was huge. I've got one for Shay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this season? You know, you start out as a starting quarterback, and your role kind of changes whenever you come back from injury. Uh, can you just talk about doing what it takes um, and shifting that role to whatever it takes for your team to win? Because uh, that's a lot to ask of a teenager to change from being the starter to an entirely different position. Yeah, luckily I was very used to it last year. You know, play a lot of positions and whenever I needed to. And this, this year, whenever I got hurt, it was bad. But I just tried to be a good teammate off the field, and whenever I came back. They said they needed your receiver, and I knew it was time to go. Yeah, I'll touch on that too, man. It's just Shea's obviously one of the best players on our football team, and one of the best players that's ever played at our school. Um, sorry, but when he when he came back, we knew Connor was one of our best eleven guys on offense too, and it was whatever it took to get our best guys on the field. And you know, Shea obviously is a great teammate the whole time. He helped our young sophomore throughout the year, uh, and then you know him coming back, getting him on the field with Connor was something we knew we had to do because they were two of our better players. Coach, what, you keep, what can you say about Connor Bailey being able to step up in that role? I the same thing I've said about him all year. The kid's got poise. Uh, he's he's got real courage under pressure, and, and he doesn't get rattled very easily. Uh, he can. Extremely talented throwing the football, and he has a great feel for things and a great feel for timing. Uh, he made some huge throws today. Shay, you guys get down there close. And this is from both players. You get down there close on numerous times today. End up having to kick field goals, not able to get the touchdown. You get down late again, one more chance. You know the conversation going on, the feeling. Was there any frustration creeping in at that point? What, what were you guys kind of saying to each other? Uh, we were obviously frustrated not being able to get there and score. But at the end of the day, we were still getting points up on the board, and we know our defense isn't going to give up much. So we were fine with it at the end of the day. Yeah. Coach, would you, <laughs> Coach, could you talk about the crowd, the, the crowd that, that came up here to support you, I, you guys today? Let them talk about the crowd, man. These these guys grew up in that community, and they, they know what it's about there. And uh, they got a, they got a cult, cult-like following there in town. So I'll let them talk about that. Go ahead, Reed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, probably. We have a saying that like last person to leave has to lock up Pete uh, Port Nature. So I mean, everybody's coming out supporting us. I mean, they want to win it just as bad as we do. So it's really great. And Groves. Oh yeah. <laughs> Into. Yeah. Now that same same account, you know, winning it, you know, in the Golden Triangle area, you know, going into today it was perceived it was going to be a Dallas Fort Worth sweep and all that. But but what does it mean to win this for the Golden Triangle in Southeast Texas? I mean, it's great to have it back home. I mean, we have, especially for us, we haven't won a state championship in 50 years. So, I mean, it's great to bring it back to the 409. Yeah, uh, I got more text messages this week than you'd believe from people in our area. Just the uh, good luck bringing home represent Southeast Texas type messages. And, um, you know, it, for us, it, it's nice to do that. But uh, we, we, we all play for each other. And I, I speak for them. Uh, it's, it's about our team and, um, and our community, really. So. Uh, they, they went out and represented our community extremely well tonight. Coach, talk about the emphasis on sticking with the running game. I thought that was the difference in the game. Yeah. And wins, breakaway ability. Yeah, uh, some of those coaches are really, really good at adjusting stuff at halftime. Um, and, you know, our, our, the strength of our team, the heart of our team has been our offensive line. Those guys uh, are really, really good football players. And we talked at halftime about, hey, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. but. We're going to keep running the ball right at them, and, and we're going to do some stuff in the run game to, to keep the passing game open and keep the play-action game open and throw in some of the RPO stuff that we were able to throw and uh, motion and Shea in and letting him block some linebackers at times, which is a little different look than what we've had uh, the past few weeks. And, uh, you know, our coaches did, a, did an unbelievable job of preparing and uh, knowing what to expect coming out after halftime and not getting, not getting uh, frustrated by the lack of – big plays in the run game and sticking with it. And, and that was huge. Uh, you know, our, our coaches work, work as hard as anybody I've ever been around. They're, they're tireless and their efforts unbelievable. And the preparation is, is extremely thorough and it showed up today. 
Coach, Final question. Coach, can you talk about the two-year process of revamping that defense from a group that maybe struggled before you got here to one of the best groups in the state now? Yeah, it was. Um, it started just. It's just a, a mentality, and it's, it starts with our defensive coordinator, Coach McDaniel, and, and the way they practice over there, and it's extremely uh, fast and aggressive and physical, and uh, they practice that way all the time. And you know, we, we went back to work in the weight room, and you know, guys like Reed, Reed started as a sophomore on a defense that struggled a little bit. And, uh, he didn't really want to play defense, and it's one of those things where we had to convince him of it and, and make it make it cool again, really, in, in our in our town. And that, that's something that our team really bought into is the, the toughness side of things, and uh, the weight room has made a huge difference in, in who we are and what we've been able to do. And um, the, you know, the defensive mentality, like like we said, put the ball down and let's go. One more for the players. What is it like after last year watching them celebrate? You guys coming up short, and now 365 some days. <laughs> You're, you're, you're the one celebrating. What is that feeling like for you guys? Well, I mean, it's all, it, was, it was so sweet, you know, because, I mean, they're talking the whole game to us, and it's just it's that much better whenever we get the chance to win. And I mean, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much else to say. I think, uh, you know, I'm not going to speak for them. I know for me, this is one of those things that you will be on a six-hour bus ride home and get to think and reflect on what, what this was uh, quite a bit, and I don't think that reality of – us freaking winning the state championship and being the uh, best team in Texas has set in yet for me. So, so sorry, it's a, saying that out loud makes me a little little emotional there. But I, I, that's one of those things I think we'll, we'll realize and it'll set in for all of us uh, at a later time a little more um, what we were able to accomplish this year because it's truly incredible. Do you have anything to Scout. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You